there is a spiritual reality to the human experience that we in the West have neglected to recognize and affirm. Western society has a number of things of which to be tremendously proud. The enlightenment that produced our founding fathers was one of the greatest revolutions in human thought and scientific discovery that has ever occurred. Its chief contribution was the elevation of empiricism, the development of the scientific method, and driving broad-based progress through empirical observations through which problems could be solved. The downside of empiricism is the complete neglect and failure to address the spiritual realities of the human condition. And I think much of what we see in modern American and Western life where we have such tremendous material wealth and technological prowess paired with profound symptoms of broad-based despair yes. that are yes. expressed through asphyxiating mortality statistics tied to what we call deaths of despair. And those are the combined fatalities of suicide, alcohol-related disease, and drug overdose. We live in an unbelievably advanced society, the most advanced that has ever been in human history from a wealth, material, and technological perspective. We also live in a society that is suffering from an incredible degree of dehumanized dynamics that are hostile to individual identity. There has been a monumental failure of American institutions that are charged with fostering social cohesion and broad-based progress for 30 years to address these things in any meaningful way. Having observed just the opioid epidemic, and I, I reference the opioid epidemic, I care about it independently, but it is the greatest symptom of the much larger problem that afflicts American society, and that is a spiritual problem rooted in our disconnection from our human divinity. Regardless of what one's position is on the existence of a higher power or an eternal God, here is the reality. <laughs> the statistical likelihood of, uh, of the human life that we have on this earth and the broader universe is incredibly rare. We ourselves are comprised of elements that come from a supernova somewhere in a distant ancient past that has culminated in our ability to see, live, perceive, rejoice, cry, and have the full range of the beauty and poignancy of the human experience. That by itself is deserving of reverence for every individual who is alive, regardless of what one's position is on the existence of God or not. And I would add this before we get too far down the road. I happen to be a believer I happen to be a believer who recognizes that as a finite person, it would be folly for me to try to define within a, a well-structured box or, or container the infinite. I mean, any human attempt to distill God is, is folly. But there's no question in my mind that God is real. And the greatest and most sacred gift God has given us is that of free will. So uh -huh. while I am a believer... Those who are not are to be accorded the utmost respect and reverence in their exercise of that choice because that is the most sacred gift given to us by our maker is that of free will to think, believe, and be who we choose to be. And the only person to whom we are accountable on the other side of this life is God. Now, that waited us into some deep water, deeper but, water but, than what you intended. But, but, but. That's, but that's exactly what I intend because truthfully, for me, when I comprehend these psychedelics, and I have not, as I mentioned, I've not done it. I don't, did my, have done mushrooms recreationally in a very small amount, maybe a couple times in my life, starting in my teen years. I have a huge respect and also I think a healthy fear and feel very strongly that these things need to be administered in the kind of environments that you're speaking of. And, and, and doing ayahuasca the one time, it was with an individual who's done this for 25 years and so on and so forth. And I went into it with very specific intentions. That said, there is a search without question. I look at these things as, as a tool to one, help the people that I've been trying to help my whole career. Mm -hmm. And I see the flaws in diet and exercise. In other words, like, of course they work physiologically. Of course I can take 
excess body fat off your body if we give you less calories. Fat's stored energy. If I put less energy in and I move you more, you use more energy, you'll lose the body fat. What I can't fix is here. It's the put the weight back on problem. And I don't think GLP-1s are the answer for a host of reasons, and it's a different show. That said, the second piece is my own personal obsession with it due to that desired connection for elevating my myself on the planet, being a better person, channeling better my higher calling. Um, and the third piece is also deeply personal because I have an Alzheimer's gene. I have an ApoE4 gene. <laughs> there is no question that this is something that will get me. I've noticed it throughout my life. I've had ADD. I don't remember things really. Never have. There's definitely an issue there. And I, I appreciate, you know, one of my greatest fears is going from this mom that my, you know, my kids were like, mom was larger than life. Mom could do anything. Remember that story about mom? And it's like when she had us on the jet skis in the middle of the, like, that's how I want them to remember me. Yeah. I don't want it to be, I saw this woman go from here to pooping her pants and not knowing my name. Yeah, yeah. And we've just seen this huge scandal with all this fake research regarding Alzheimer's medications that came out. Max Lugover did a great piece on it just a few months ago. And I'm looking at this wondering after the video you showed me of the guy with Parkinson's walking. And Brian, I've... I've tried everything, peptides, different things, and I notice some of it. I notice a bit of a difference with regard to sharpness and recall. But I'm looking at this also in that capacity, and now I want to move into that. I have an aunt who has Parkinson's, and my mom was like, "I, you know, I, tell me when this is coming out." You know, because I've told her about you and your work and the video you showed me. Let's look at it from that perspective. I mean, I think cognitive decline is. Uh, four or five on top killers. Yep. You got metabolic disease, heart disease, cancer, and then I think it's I think it's four. I think it's the next one of dementia of some sort. What do you see here for that? Because what am I doing? Am I sending a 70-year-old to go do ibogaine? Yeah. Am I starting ibogaine at 50 and doing it once a year? Like if that's the protocol that I or what is the protocol if that's something I'm looking to address and what have you seen in that field talk to me about that whole Parkinson's dementia cognitive function piece thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the podcast please like comment subscribe and share and make sure to let me know what guests you want to see on in the future